In this video, we're looking at how we can create a dynamic jitter plot in Excel. There's lots of great techniques in here. So if you're ready, let's get started. There are many ways that we could have approached this solution. I've decided to break it down so we have a clear workflow. It goes from data to the calculate phase and then into the present phase. So we should have a clear flow all the way from our data to our output. In our example file, we have a table called data and it contains columns of name, department and salary. We then have our calculate section. We have two parameters that we will be using, our jitter offset and our jitter size. We'll also be looking at access count and we'll be using that later in the video. Our main calculations will be for our labels and then also for the values that we want to place in our chart. We also need to sort our names so that we can create a data validation list in alphabetical order. And then finally, we have an area for our present section. That's where we're going to place our chart. So that's the layout of our example file. Now let's go and start with our calculations. Our jitter plot is based on a scatter chart. So that means we need X and Y values. Let's start by calculating the values that we can use for our axis labels. So we need to calculate the label and then also the position where we want to place that label. So here in cell F10, I'll type equals and we're going to create a unique list of our departments. Let's sort this list. So sort, then unique, open bracket. And we want from our data table, from our department column. I'll close the square bracket, close the unique, close the sort, and then I'll press return. So that now gives us a list of our departments in a sorted order. Next, we want to calculate the X position. So what we want to do is to place our label in the middle of each of our sections. So what we're going to do is type equal sequence, open bracket, and we want to count the number of rows that we have for our labels. So that'll be F10 and then hash to get that spill range. So we'll close the rows and we'll close the sequence. That gives us numbers from one to seven, but we want to place this in the middle of our column. So therefore, we're going to take that value and then we're going to add our jitter offset. So that's the value in cell G5. So now we get values from 0.5 up to 6.5. Now we're going to place our labels so that they are along the bottom of our axis. So that means we need a list of zero values. So in cell H10 equals sequence, open bracket. And we want a sequence that is for the number of rows. So rows of F10 hash. We'll close our rows. Then we want to have one column. We want it to start at zero and to step by zero. And then we'll close that sequence function. So that now gives us for each of our labels where it will be placed on our X and Y axis. Now let's move on and calculate the X and Y values for the dots that we want to place in our jitter plot. We're going to start with the name column. This is a helper column that we'll use later in our calculations equals data and we just want the values from the name column. I'll close that bracket and that now gives us that list. Let's also create a helper column for our department equals data and then the department column. Fantastic. Now we need to move on and calculate the X value. So this is how far along the horizontal axis we need to be. Now our values are grouped by department. So to find out what number we want to group things by, we're going to start with the match function equals match, open bracket. And we want to match the value from K10 hash, which is our department. And we want to match that with our department list in F10 hash. And that needs to be an exact match. So I'll enter zero and then close that bracket. So this now tells us the position for each of our individuals. So number two is because Brenda is in the finance department. The next element that we want to add is the jitter. This is the offset that we apply so that all those dots don't appear in a single line. So we're going to add a rand array 
open bracket, of the rows from our data and the department column. We'll close that rows function. And now we want a single column and we want random numbers from our minus jitter size all the way to our positive jitter size. So this gives us numbers between minus 0.5 and 0.5. We'll close that rand array. We also want these numbers to be centered around the, the pillar that we have. So therefore we're going to divide that by two. And then finally, we're going to plus our jitter offset. I'll press return on that. Now what this gives us is that anyone in the finance department, we get values between 1.25 and 1.75, so they're centered around 1.5. Anyone in the head office department, so that's department three, will have values between 2.25 and 2.75. So that means we can group those dots together, but they'll still have a random placement. The next item that we need is our Y value, and that's just going to be our salary column. So data and then salary. Right, the next element that we want to use is what value do we want to highlight? So we're going to have a data validation list where we can select an individual and that will highlight their name on the chart. So we're going to use an if function equals if, open bracket. We want to check where J10 hash, so they are our names. If that is equal to the value in T6, so that's where our data validation list is going to be. If it is equal to that, we want to return the value from L10 hash, which is our X values. If not, we want to return the NA function. The NA function has a special place in charts because it isn't rendered on the face of the chart. So by using NA, if that name does not match the name in T6, it means that value won't appear. I'll press return and that now calculates those values. As you can see, Brenda Griffin, who is the first person, that has calculated the value, but for everybody else, it has calculated NA. Let's now do the same for our Y values. Equals, if, open bracket, J10 hash, so our names, if that equals T6, which is the name that we want to match, if that's the case, we want the value from M10 hash, which is our Y values. If not, we want to return the NA function. So I'll close that, press return, and again, you can see that Brenda Griffin has a value for highlight, but everyone else is NA. Next, we want to create our data validation list. This means that we can select a name from that list and that person will be highlighted on the chart. We want that list to be in alphabetical order. So I'll type equals sort, open bracket, and we want this on the name column from our data table. So we now have that list sorted in alphabetical order. Our data validation list will be in cell T6. So I'll select that, go to data, and then data validation. For our data validation list, we want to have a list, and that list can be from anywhere in Q10 hash. So that will give us that entire alphabetical list. I'll click OK on that. And now when we select our dropdown, we can see all those employees' names. So if I select Brittany Murphy, you can see that that now has selected Brittany Murphy and our highlight X and highlight Y now shows her values rather than Brenda Griffin. So let's just return that back. And that's it, our data validation list is now ready. We want to ensure that our chart is dynamic. So that means that if we add new data to our table, it automatically expands for that data. To ensure that this happens, we're going to use named ranges. So for every element which appears on our chart, we need a named range. Let's start with our label. So I'll select cell F10, and then I'll go to formulas and define name. The name will be label. And we want this to be on our worksheet. So that is our example worksheet. That's the name of the sheet. And we want this named range to apply to F10 hash. So that is the entire spill range and not just a single cell. 
then I'll click OK. Now in the example file, I've already created all of the other named ranges. So we need one for label, one for label X, one for label Y. We need a named range for X, for Y, highlight X and highlight Y. So each of those uh, ranges we need a named range for. We can see that there in the name manager. So we've already created each of those. All the elements that we need for our chart are now ready. So that means we can now go ahead and create our chart. I'll go to insert and then from the scatter drop down, I'll select a scatter chart. We'll drag that into position and then I'll hold Alt to resize the chart. Currently, this is a blank chart. We need to add data to this. So I'll right click in the body of the chart and go down to select data. In the chart data range, I'll click on the add icon. Our first series will be our labels. So I'll call that label. I'll select in the X values and I'll press F3 to bring up the list of named ranges. And I want to use the label X. Next, for the Y values, we want to apply label Y. Then I'll click OK and then OK. Now let's add another series. So add, this one will be called values. The X values will be our X named range. And our Y values will be our Y named range. And then finally, we want our highlight. And our highlight, so F3, we want highlight X, OK. And then our Y values are going to be highlight Y. And we'll click OK and then OK again. Right, our chart is now starting to take shape. We can see the dots for where we want to place our department labels. We can see the values that we have for our jitter plot. And we also have a highlighted value. So that is Brenda Griffin. That's where she exists within our jitter plot. We've got all the values on our chart. So now it's all about formatting. I'll select one of our value dots. I'll press Control one to bring up the formatting pane. Go to the paint icon. And then for the markers, we want to apply a solid fill. We'll select a dark gray color and then make this 50% transparent. And we want no line. Let's now select our highlighted dot. We'll come across to our markers. We'll make this a solid fill. We'll give this a color that's more vibrant. We also want no line. We might want to make that dot bigger just to really emphasize it. So we'll go to built in and let's make that size eight. Okay, now let's format our labels at the bottom. So I'll select one of the value dots, click on the plus icon, go to data labels, and we want the labels on the bottom. These all appear as zeros. That's not quite what we want. So I'll select a data label, press control one. That displays the format data labels pane. We want the values from cells. And the range that we want to use, I'll press F3, and we want our label named range. OK, and then OK again. Now currently this is showing the value from cells and also the Y value, which we no longer need. So how's our chart looking? Not too bad. We no longer need our markers. So we can format these so that they have no fill and no line. So marker, no fill, no line. We can then also delete the X axis. Now let's just resize this. And let's give our numbers a format. So our number let's say we want a number with zero decimal places. Fantastic, our chart is now looking really good. We have each of our values and they're all grouped together inside each of our departments. Unfortunately, we have one issue remaining. Because of how Excel applies defaults to Axis, what we have is this blank space 
on the right hand side that we don't want. Now we could try and enter a value as the maximum value for our x-axis, but that would then hard code that value. And if we add any new departments, our chart wouldn't be dynamic. So we are going to have to turn to some VBA code. And this is why we have our axis count. So it equals count A, and we want the count of F10 hash. So that is just our list of departments. So that gives us a value of seven because we have seven departments. We're also going to create a named range for this. So formulas and then define name. And we'll call this axis count. We'll set that on our example workbook and that will be exactly K6. It's not K6 hash, it's just K6. Then I'll click OK. So now to apply this with VBA, I press Alt F11 and come to the Visual Basic Editor. Now we want to place this code inside the worksheet module. So this is my worksheet module and this is the code that we will be using. So this runs whenever the worksheet recalculates. We've said that our chart is called chart one. Let's just check that. If I click on my chart, you can see that the chart name is chart one. We're then creating an object for our chart and we're also calculating a value. So that value is from whatever our worksheet name is and then the axis count. So that is looking up that named range. We're then setting the maximum scale of our category axis to be equal to that value. So that means whatever is in axis count, that is the maximum value that will be applied to the X axis. So now let's try this. Let's change to a different name. Let's go for Brian Freeman. You see that Brian Freeman works in logistics and you can see that now our axis is the correct size. Let's select another individual, Helen West. Helen West works in the warehouse and you can see that her salary is highlighted there. Now let's see what happens if we add new data. So below our table, we have a new department, the legal department. I'm going to select that data and drag it up below our table. Fantastic, everything has now recalculated. Let's go take a look at our chart. And look at that, we now have our legal department. That is the department that we added. So our axis has expanded so that we always have the right number of departments. And that's it. That's how we can create a dynamic jitter plot in Excel. Our workflow was that our data was in a table. We used dynamic arrays that then calculated the values from that table. We used named ranges to reference our dynamic array calculations. And then we put those named ranges into a chart. For the elements that we couldn't handle automatically, we then used VBA to calculate that axis value for us. If you like this video, why not follow us and subscribe? And why not head over to excelofthegrid.com forward slash academy and check out our training courses. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.